Good morning. Ah, still morning by me. I beg your pardon. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. From uh, Psalm 118, one of my wife's favoritest psalms. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, please. I expect you to follow me along. I will speak to you as though you are following along in the scriptures. Okay? Very quickly. Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 on to verse 12. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. And Luke chapter 6, Luke chapter 6, verses 22 on to verse 23. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. And when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in, like, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. You know how David says in one of the Psalms, you look this up on your own time, about how he says, if it were an enemy that had reproached me, then I could have bore, uh, borne with it. But it was thou, a man mine equal. We took sweet counsel together. It, it's very easy, it's easier sometimes to suffer reproach at the hands of the lost world, right? But what happens when those reproaches come upon you from those who are of your family? Oh yeah. Your family. This brother of ours says, I have many relations, you know, meaning related to people as far as blood, family. But very few brothers and sisters. Go to John chapter 7. John chapter 7. John chapter 7. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 13. John chapter 7. Verses 1 on to verse 13. As I told you at the beginning of this video, you are expected to follow me along, and I will speak to you as though you are. Okay? After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. 
His brethren therefore said unto him, His brethren, His brethren. Some might say, well, those his disciples. No, his brothers. And he also had sisters. Uh, Roman Catholicism, the whore, Mystery Babylon the Great, wants those of you who um, are ignorant or willfully ignorant, they want you to believe that their Mary, the Queen of Heaven, uh, Diana the Ephesians, Semiramis, um, was a perpetual virgin. It's a lie. Okay? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? God manifest in the flesh. Okay? He had brothers. He had sisters. Okay? Half brothers, half sisters, yes. But he had brothers and sisters. Okay? Okay, uh, please, dear people, and you of the church and living God, you know this. Um, please do not fall for the idiocy. An idiot is someone who is void of logic and reason. Uh, do not fall for the idiocy that Roman Catholicism tries to tell you that Mary was a virgin. Please don't fall for that. That stupid. Let's continue. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. You notice, brethren and disciples, in that one verse there? <laughs> Never mind. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, shew thyself to the world. If thou do these things, if you are who you say you are, huh? if you truly are God manifest in the flesh, the Father, if you truly are the Messiah, the Christ, right? Prove it. Shew thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. This is God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Beg your pardon. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. Your time is always ready. You just need to be broken and come to him on his terms. Remember, he ain't forcing you. This is the day that the Lord hath made. What are you going to do with this day? Hmm? The world cannot hate you. But me it hateth, because I testify of it. The works thereof that the works thereof are evil. Bloop. Yeah. The works thereof are evil. Go ye up unto this feast. Now, if you are not using the authorized version of the scriptures, you're going to notice something here. I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. Now, if you are not using the authorized version of the scriptures, yet is not in there, is it? And, and when, if you continue to read, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, will goes up to the feast. So if he says, uh, my time has not come, uh, like these, my, these Bibles say, that means Jesus is a liar. Stick with the authorized version of the scriptures. Let's continue. Uh, brethren, there are those out there. Okay, remember, let's continue. 
When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. For some said, He is a good man. Others said, Nay, but he deceiveth the people. Howbeit no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. Hmm. For fear of the Jews. No man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. To instruct us in a little, uh, in a little righteousness, do you keep your mouth shut for fear of your family? To keep the unity of peace? Hmm? Roll this around in your head. Jesus Christ is God the Father. God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Verse 5. For neither did his brethren believe in him. His own brothers, his own sisters. Kind of stings, doesn't it? John chapter 15. John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verses 18 on to verse 27. We'll close out that chapter. John chapter 15, verses 18, on to verse 27. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. And that's not talking anything about Calvinism. Okay? Nothing to do at all with the heresy of elect and non-elect of Calvinism. If I can remember, I'll try to put that video in the link uh, in the description box. Okay? Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin, but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father? Seen and hated both me and my father? Jesus is the father. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled, that it is written in their law, they hated me. Without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And the Lord is that Spirit. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Read it in its context. 
and ye also shall bear, and ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning again that's not talking about calvinism okay get that heresy out of your head okay verse 26 but when the comforter is come whom i will send unto you from the father even the spirit of truth which proceedeth from the father he shall testify of me. First John chapter four. First John chapter four. Verses five and six. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world hear them false prophets, fakes, coadjutors, and stuff like that. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Back in John 15, that was, by the way, 1 John chapter 4, verses 5 on to verse 6, if I didn't mention that, sorry. John chapter 15, verse 5. John chapter 15, verses 18 and 19 again. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. This is not in my notes, but go to Ephesians, of course, 6.12. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And it has a name. has a name. Satan, Lucifer, that old devil, serpent. And he has a church, the Catholic church, and he has an army, a Jesuit order. And he has many daughters. The church is the mother. She has many daughters. Praise the Lord. He has given us opportunity to have con con conversation with many of you via email, whatever it is, telephone. Don't do Skype much anymore. But um, we have been privileged to have many communications with many of you, the Church of the Living God. And I don't know of one of you <laughs> that is not having problems within their family. I don't know of uh, one single one of you of the Church of the Living God that is not having family problems. Especially right now at this time. I don't know of one. We ourselves within our own family on my wife's side and on my side have problems with family. And is it because of something that we do? Or is it because of who is in us? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. See. Now granted, there are some of you out there who can probably add to that by you being a jerk out there, right? <laughs> right? Hi. I've, I'm guilty of that myself sometimes, uh, unfortunately, you know. But when you strip it all away at the truth of the matter, go back to John. Go back to John chapter 15, please. Go back to John chapter 15. 
truth of the matter is, verse 19 in John 15, If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. I know of many of you personally who um, are going through such horrific things from those who call themselves your family. And we pray for so many of you. But we know that these are the last days and that, and that the redemption of the purchased possession is coming quite rapidly. We knew this was going to happen. But that don't make it any easier, does it? Does it? Go to Matthew chapter 10. Now for this part, I'm going to be using two sets of scriptures. Okay. Matthew chapter 10. We are going to read verses 16 on to verse 42 to close out the chapter. Oh! And we're going to do a little exposition here. Okay. But let's read this together. Okay. Verse 16 on to verse 42. Okay. Go there, please. This is for our instruction in righteousness too, by the way. And don't we need it? Especially when they're sending out propaganda pieces about the poison crown that are encouraging people to help those who are unable to do to get make efforts to combat the poison crown which will lead into, as spoken of in the book 1984, about how the parents get betrayed by their children. Matthew chapter six, uh, 10, verses 16 on to verse 42. And we're going to make some stops along the way. Okay? Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents. Don't be ignorant of the devil's devices. And harmless as doves. Don't fight fire with fire. Don't be like them. Be aware of them. But don't be like them. I have failed at that. You know, fighting fire with fire. That's what the devils want you to do. That's what they want you to do. They want you to compromise. But beware of men. For they will deliver you up to the councils. And they will scourge you in their synagogue. Scourge you in their synagogues. There are those who claim religion that are Christians who label you as the enemy because you are of the church of the living God and you believe the scriptures and hold to the scriptures and seek to mold your life around the scriptures. And you don't compromise. Religious people, they don't like that. You know, those who call themselves Christians. Let's continue. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Put that in context with today. For our instruction in righteousness, of course. Okay? But then in context to, of today. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. 
If anyone defile the temple of God and the temple of God, ye are, if you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. You know, you put some metallic poison in you. You say, uh -uh, I ain't doing that. Yeah. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake. For a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Verse 19, but when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. The Spirit of your Father. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, yes, this is still the Old Testament. Yes, okay. But today, if you are saved, born again of the church of the living God, you have God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost dwelling within you, and the Lord is that Spirit. When they deliver you up. Just mere men? What about if it's your own family? You don't think that's a real possibility, especially with all the propaganda that they force on people today? You don't think that's a real possibility? And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. But yet you have Roman Catholicism talking about unity. And how do you get unity today? Take this, get rid of it. Or don't use that one, but go ahead and use an NIV, uh, NASB, an ESV, an NRSV, an RV. Okay? Use one of those. Don't, don't, don't use this one. And ye shall be hated of all men. For my name's sake. See, you don't have to, when you're out there, or even doing whatever it is you do, you don't have to do anything besides, except just abide by the scriptures. And especially you do that today. We have seen it. We have encountered it. And I know for certain, many of you, many of you have. From your own family. Hi. If it was an enemy, then you could have borne it. But it was thou, a man mine equal. It was you, my mother. You, my father. You my sister, you my brother, right? You, your grandfather. You just being quiet and seeking to live your life, especially in these last days, according to the scriptures, especially right now, Come on, brother, sister, come on, you know this. And if you are watching and you do not, get ready. Get ready. Verse 22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Now, verse 22 is a dispensational difference, okay? How so? 
we today, in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, which is quickly coming to its end, we don't have to endure to the end of anything to be saved. When you come to the Lord on his terms, broken and contrite, okay, you will call out, of him, uh, out onto him out of fear, brokenness, and contrition, and may the Lord save you. And once he saves you, you are sealed with the Holy Ghost. Okay? You are sealed until the whoop, day of redemption. Okay? You cannot become unsealed. Okay? Eternal security for today in this dispensation. You don't have to endure to the end. Okay? You're going to heaven. Where he says, but he that, in, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Matthew chapter 10. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Doctrinally, this is under the law. Doctrinally, this is under the, um, in the Old Testament, uh, dispensationally, okay? He's speaking to Jews, okay? So, enduring to the end to be saved, to be saved we don't have to do that today. Okay, once you are saved, you're saved. Once saved, always saved. Okay? That's what the scriptures teach for this dispensation today. Okay? You need to re remember that. Okay? Brethren, again, you know that. There are those who watch who don't. Bear with me. Okay? Let's continue. But when they persecute you in this, this city, flee ye unto another, into another. Excuse me. For verily I say unto you, Ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. Now, roll that around in your head a little bit. His own brethren didn't believe in him. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. We'll look at that a little later. Okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, died for what you did to him, for what I did to him. He went through unimaginable suffering from his own, from his own creation. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. <laughs> it is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Of his household. That, that'll, that you can reference into another video that will be coming here later this week. But um, you're of the church of the living God. You have God the Father, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ, dwelling within you. The world's going to hate you. And not because of anything, but rather that you are the purchased possession. Bought with his blood, and you have the Lord dwelling within you. That's enough for the world to hate you. Especially those who are of your immediate family. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. You shall know them by their fruits. They cannot keep up a lie forever. Sooner or later, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot. Referring to those who are fake. It happens all the time. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. And what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, 
but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Who's that him? Himself, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? See, the Jesuits never forgive or forget. Once they kill you, they'll go after your family, your immediate family, and kill everybody that's associated with you. That's what Jesuits do. And those who are in league with Mystery Babylon, the coadjutors, and those who are fake, that's what they do. They're not just satisfied with you. They want to get rid of your execrable race. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore. Ye are more value than many sparrows. Whosoever, therefore, will confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Now, right here again is a dispensational difference. Okay? Because during the kingdom of heaven, it's works. Okay? There is no faith involved. You have heretics here who says that you need faith in the kingdom of heaven. That's insanity. You're going to be able to see God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ himself in Jerusalem. When there will finally be peace in Jerusalem. When he's ruling and reigning for a thousand years in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? You don't need faith during the time, uh, during the kingdom of heaven, dear friend. Because you're going to be able to see the our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? But if we deny him today, he will deny us. How? In rewards and maybe something here to do with our life right now. But if we believe not yet, he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. A dispensational difference. You need to remember that. Okay? Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I am not come. I am I came not to send peace. But a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and a daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, verses 49 on to verse 53. Okay, now let's read verses 34 on to 36 again. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to send a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's foe shall be they of his own household. Luke chapter 12, verses 49 on to verse 53. I am come to send fire on the earth. And what will I if it be already kindled? See, when he saves you, that fire is already kindled. Get it? But I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how am I straightened till it be accomplished? Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth? I tell you, nay, but rather division. 
See, so you got the Christians in, uh, of the church buildings talking about peace when there is no peace. Do you think there's going to be peace today? Peace in your own family? You can have peace here. You can have peace, shalom, within yourself, knowing on whom you believe. Knowing that whether you're absent with of uh, from the body, you are present with the Lord. You know that. And that gives you a peace. A peace that passeth, passeth all understanding. But you're alive today, brother and sister. You can have peace within you because you're, you belong to the Lord. But out there. And if you know someone in your family who calls themselves a Christian... And they have no conflicts, no struggles, no, because they have compromised. <laughs> and stabbed them, got stabbed. They are of the world. If I were you, I would stand in doubt of them. Verse 52. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, Three against two, and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother, a, the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Why is that? Go to Amos, the Old Testament. Go to Amos. Amos chapter 5, one verse. Amos chapter 5, verse 10. See, when you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you want to share that with your family. But because of what we've already looked at, the Holy Ghost that is within you convicts you of your sin personally, yes, but by the way you adhere your life to the Scriptures... It's a testimony against them because you are living your life in accordance to what God wants you to do. That's why it's very important that you don't compromise, but that this is your standard. And that you examine yourself every single day. What about you? Uh, yeah, I do. What about you? But see, when you live according to this, you don't even sometimes have to speak, do you? Do you, sister? Do you, brother? Sometimes you don't even have to say anything. Do you? Just the way you are living in accordance to the scriptures. Amos chapter 5, verse 10. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate. They abhor him that speaketh uprightly. And when you do speak, speak in the truth of Scripture, as the oracles of God. And out there, do not, they hate you who speak uprightly. You know that you can't be like, why is this happening? But the fact that it is. The fact that it is could probably, I know, is pretty hard for so many of us. We were, <laughs> we were warned this was going to happen. We were told ahead of time. Micah, Micah, chapter 2, Micah, chapter 2, one verse, verse 6. Think about this within the context of your own family. 
also boom, out there. You try to talk truth against the the um, propaganda of today, they psh, cut you off, don't they? Micah chapter 2, verse 6. Prophesy ye not. How do you prophesy today? The Holy Ghost through you will speak to whomever through you through the scriptures. Okay? Old Testament prophets giving revelation of things not yet to come or that have not yet happened. There are no Old Testament prophets today. One prophesies by the Lord dwelling within them speaks through the scriptures. Okay? Prophesy ye not, say they to them that prophesy. They shall not prophesy to them that they shall not take shame. Oh, ho, ho, yeah. 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 And see, brethren, sisters, when you are aligning, when your life is lining up with the scriptures, and that is a day-by-day -day thing, okay? Second by second, moment by moment, breath by breath, whatever. You do that daily. When your life is aligned with the scriptures, when you are seeking to work out what the Lord has put in through the scriptures, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And also, Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7, verses 5 on to verse 7. Put this into context for today. Okay? Think about this. And think about this also, what you're going through within your own family. We were warned. Micah chapter 7, verses 5 on verse 7. Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guy. Guy, keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter riseth up against her mother. We have experienced that. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. Here's the answer. Therefore will I look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. Look at that. My God will hear me. We were warned of this, brethren. And that don't make it any easier. We're there with you. Me, my wife, we, we're there with you. We as well have family issues. Those who have disowned us. Those who have outright kind of threatened us. Making statement, please don't spread misinformation. Not a threat yet. Verses 37 on to verse 40 in Matthew chapter 10. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Remember, Paul counted all, thing as, all things as dung that he may win Christ. Not that he had to earn salvation or anything, nothing like that. No, 
No. But that his life may be all dedicated to Christ. Okay? Paul is our example for us today. To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. He is the apostle of the Gentile, by the way. Yes. But the doctrine that was revealed unto Paul is to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay? But Paul is our example. How we, the Gentile, especially, are to serve the Lord. And Paul counted all things as done. Okay? That's why if you're married, the two of you have to be one flesh. Not just physically. Okay? It's a, it's a lot deeper than just that. Because if you ain't one flesh, if you're not one mind, He that loveth father or, ma or mother more than me is not worthy than me. Worthy of me. Excuse me. Let me reread that. Sorry. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loveth his life for my sake, and he that loseth, excuse me, his life for my sake shall find it. Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14, verses 25 on to verse 35. Luke chapter 14, verses 25 under 35 to close out that chapter. Now, let's read that again. He that, in Matthew chapter 10, verses 37 on to verse 40. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Luke chapter 14, verses 25 on to verse 35. And there went great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. That does not mean that you hate your family members. But what it means is Christ needs to be everything to you. In the beginning, God. God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, needs to be the number one thing in your life. Above your father, above your mother, above your wife. And here's something that I personally cannot comprehend through experience. Children. Your own children. And brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. That's a heavy cost, isn't it? Yeah. Do you ever put into the equation what it cost the Lord to make you right? Because of what you did, high to him. When was the last time you read Isaiah 53? For which of you intending 
to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. You know the parable of the sower? Remember that? You know those who are among thorns, stony ground, stuff like that, when they, they get a little persecution, at first they're like, oh sure, I'll just believe. Then they get a little persecution, it's like, Ugh, I don't want anything to do with that. Or they, they just believe, you know, because Jesus is their errand boy than the cares of this world. You know, you got, you got a house payment, okay? You got a house payment, you got a car payment, you got to pay for this, you got to pay for that. And the cares of this world, choke it, All right? Counting the cost that maybe perhaps your own mother will disown you. That your own father who claims to be a Christian will have nothing to do with you because you're a Bible thumper. And you will not compromise Your own daughter will be so offended at the fact that you are so fearfully and wonderfully made and that you know the truth and show love as a mother onto your daughter and that daughter fights you on it. And you can see the look of disgust in their face. What did we read to start? Huh? Huh? Hold your place here in Luke. What did we read to start? Luke 6? Luke 6, right? Right? Luke 6, 22 under verse 23. Blessed are, ye, uh, blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast you your name... And cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake? Rejoice ye in that day and be and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. Not here. In heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. Does that make it any easier? No. No, of course not. Did it make it any easier for our Lord himself? Lest happily, back in Luke, Chapter 14 at verse 29. Pick your part. Lest happily after he hath laid the foundation. And no other foundation can no one lay but that which is laid. That foundation is Jesus Christ. Not Peter. Lest happily after he hath laid the foundation. And is not able to finish it. And all that behold it begin to mock him saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, Whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Verse 26, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. His own life also. 
Verse 33, so likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all, that he hath cannot be my disciple. Jesus, you know, how, how often have you heard, make Jesus first? How often do you hear that, right? You hear it. But putting it into practice is something else, isn't it? Yes. It is. And praise the Lord that you can't do it. You can't do it. But the Lord who is in you, the comforter, he can do it. With man it is impossible, but not with God. With God, all things are possible. <laughs> Do you, I don't want to be disassociated from my brother, from my father. My wife, she doesn't want to be disassociated from her family. Neither do you, brother. Neither do you, sister. But are all things as done that you may have Christ? Some of you, well, Brad, that's easy for you to say. No, that's not. <laughs> you have heard so often, haven't you? Think about it. But the putting it in practice, actually putting the Lord first, And if you're married, the Lord comes first. You were to ask my wife. My wife would say, yeah, the Lord comes first. And you know what? She means it. You ask me, Brad, what comes first? The Lord or your wife? The Lord. And I mean that. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, putting it into practice. It's hard, brethren. Verse 34 and 35. Salt is good. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Go to Luke 9. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Verses 23 on to verse 27. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Daily. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Examine yourself. Prove your own self, whether ye be in the faith. As we spake about a day or two ago, it's healthy for you to take stock of yourself, okay? If, for example, you know, you as the Church of the Living God, you can could sin and do something totally stupid, and then in repentance while praying, asking for forgiveness for that, in your head it's like, how could I as a saved man, how could you as a saved woman have thought have said, have done such a thing, right? 
How, how, could I be, how could I be saved, Lord, and thought that and done that? How, when was the last time you read Romans chapter 7, dear friend? Hmm? When was the last time you read that? That's healthy. To examine yourself on a daily basis. But see, there's a problem. If every single waking second of your day Young brother, you looking at me, that's a problem. If every single waking day you're doubting whether or not you are of the church of the living God, there's a problem there. There's a big problem there. And that you got to figure out between yourself and the Lord, whomever you may be. But remember, to examine yourself and that daily. We are to do. And like I said, it's, you know, every once in a while. Am I? How could I have done that? How could I have said that? That's, that happens. Okay? That happens, yes. And usually when that happens and the Lord's like, hey, well you, well, you think I'm lying to you? No, Lord. <laughs> that builds your faith. That builds your faith. That's why, brethren, again, that's why your life needs to be fashioned According to the scriptures. It's not an option. Because if you don't. What's the alternative? Live like the world. So eventually the Lord will kill you. To stop you from making a mess of yourself. And of himself. And at the judgment seat, he looks at you with shame. You're saved, yeah. But looks at you with shame. Yeah, just get in there. No, I <laughs> No. No, brethren. And he said, uh, said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his father's and of the holy angels. But I tell you of a truth, dispensational difference here, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. How is that a dispensational difference? The kingdom of God. See the kingdom of God. Okay. Elsewhere, he says, till he see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom, when he sat upon an ass, you know, a donkey, and rode in, okay, they saw that, that was the Lord coming into his kingdom, okay, uh, here in the uh, gospel accounts, right here, the kingdom of God, spiritual, there were some who were alive during this time in Luke chapter 9, who were alive when they saw the spiritual come. In Acts chapter 2. And in, in the book of Acts. The book of transition. See. That's the dispensational difference there. Okay. Remember that. Okay. But now. Let's finish. Verse 40 on to verse 42. In Matthew chapter 10. He that receiveth you. Receiveth me. And he that receiveth me. Receiveth him that sent me. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. 
your labor is not in vain. Don't forget that, brother or sister. Don't forget that. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. So we have to count the cost. And the cost is, once you put Christ as everything, first above all things, it's going to cost you. Friends, family, possessions, your job. Let's see. It's worth it. worth it it's worth it sister brother Matthew chapter 24 Matthew chapter 24 verses 4 under verse 12 Matthew chapter 4 uh, 24 verses 4 under verse 12 Jesus answered and said unto them take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Christ, anointed one. Okay? How many are out there saying that they have an anointed ministry? How many are out there saying, uh, claiming to be Christians and are not of the church of the living God? Okay? This is for our instruction in righteousness. Because remember, Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, this is the leading up of it. Okay, the majority of it is going to be fulfilled after we are taken out. Okay, the church of the living God, the redemption of the purchased possession. But are we not seeing these things today? Their fulfillment will come once we're gone. But we are seeing these things. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Beg your pardon. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Coming soon. And even more so, of course, during the time of Jacob's trouble. Of course. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because of iniquity shall, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And when it comes unto the poison crown and the stab and the bicep today, isn't that amazing how that's tearing families apart? Isn't it? Isn't it amazing today because of the poison crown and the stab and the bicep? really beginning to see the true colors of some, aren't you? Especially those who are of your own family, right? Second Timothy. Second Timothy, chapter 3. 
2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 9. Now see, like I said, we know this, right? We all know this, church of the living God. We know this, we've heard this, right? It's happening though. It's happening. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, can't hold water. <laughs> Fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. They just want to get back to normal. I don't want things to go back to the way they were before because the way they were before were horrible. The way they are right now are even worse. We don't want to be here, but we are, but we are. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. How many have we run into out there who say they are Christians? <laughs> yeah. How many of your family? Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, as Janais and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further. For their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 7 on to verse 13. Denying the power thereof. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, separate, not to be like that, not to be like that, Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, to be ambassadors, you know, having the ministry of reconciliation, 
the word of reconciliation. We are ambassadors. We pray you, therefore, in Christ's stead, be, uh, be ye reconciled. Which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. It's not Calvinism. Like, like I said, I, I will remember at least to link that video in this, okay? But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. For which thing, for, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Luke 21 now. Luke 21. Luke 21, verses 12 under verse 17. Luke 21, verses 12 under verse 17. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it, therefore, in your hearts, not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Uh, didn't we read this earlier where he said, uh, the spirit of your father? And he says, I will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And ye shall be betrayed by both by parents and brethren and kinsfolks and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. And especially right now, brethren. Especially right now. We were warned. But don't be ashamed. You, you know who, on whom you believed, right? So take courage. Be strengthened. Be quickened. John 15, John 15, verses 18 on to verse 27. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you, right? If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. I know we already read this, but go to John 16, verses 1 on to verse 3. And this we have to remember, brethren, especially right now at this time. Okay? We have to remember this. These things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. John 16, verses 1 on to verse 3. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh 
And whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. They'll disassociate from you. They'll cast you out as evil. I, I Like I said, we know so many, so many of you, so many of you, whose own family has turned on them. We know so many of you. And we, like I said, we pray for so many of you. But this is what was going to happen, and we know this. We know this. I leap for joy. Because our reward is great in heaven. Yeah, you could argue and say, yeah, that's easier said than done. But it's worth it, brethren. It's worth it. And you know, while we're in John, go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Okay? John chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the, of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Jesus Christ, God our Father, was in the world, who made the world, and the world knew him not. His own creation knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. His own. His own creation, his own people, the Jews. Salvation is of the Jews. Jesus Christ is a Jew. Okay? Not black. Not white. Jewish. Okay? He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He, was, uh, he, <laughs> he came unto his own, and his own received him not. John chapter 3, verses 17 on verse 21. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He came first as the Lamb. When he come back, he's going to be the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Now think about that. You and your family 
saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Okay? The Lord lives within you. He was, he is the light, the lighteth all men. Okay? He is the light. Four times, capital L, light. That light lives within you. And in your immediate family. Whether they want to admit it or not, whether they like it or not, that light comes out. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deed should be reproved. <clears throat> Verse 4 in John chapter 1, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Verse 21 in John chapter 3. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. The world hates the light, the true light, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And because you are of the church of the living God, they who are of the world will hate you. We know this. It stings even more so when it is of your own family. And you know, something that I can't comprehend. And this, men, this is something that we have to take in consideration. When it comes to our children. Now see, I can't, can't, I can't have children, okay? I can't. So I can't, I, through experience, I can't speak on these things, okay? But Jesus Christ is God our Father, and he came onto his own, and his own received him not, okay? I don't know what it's like as a woman a sister, whose own child came from betwixt her feet, reject the Lord. And not only reject the Lord, but turn that rejection and hatred unto their own mother. And you and I as men, talking to men, that's not an excuse for anything, no, but we have to remember you know, especially, you know, your wife, you know, if your your own son, your own daughter or whatever um, hates you guys because you are saved and they are of the world. We have to keep that in mind for our wives and for you women whose, own, you know, the, the child came from betwixt their feet there, man. We don't know what, that, what that's like. Not an excuse for them, but um, how hard it must be for especially a woman whose own son, daughter, turn on them and hate them and would turn them in and would betray them because their mother is of the Lord. We don't know what that's like. But guess who does? It's different for us men, I would only imagine. How could it be? Well, you know, the child did not come out from betwixt our feet. Right, guys? Who, who have sons and daughters? I don't know. Right? I don't know. But the Lord does. He created everything. He created you. And his own received him not. Matthew chapter 23. 
Matthew chapter 23, verses 37, on to verse 39. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, Ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. His own brethren didn't believe in him. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Like I said, I can't, I can't understand what it's like to be a father. Definitely not a mother. But see, Jesus Christ is the father. He is the father. God created you. God created me. Okay? How do you think he feels? How do you think he feels when his own receives him not? Oh, he's angry. He's angry with the sinner every day. Amen. Amen. Now you think he understands. He went through it. Go to Luke, Luke 13. Luke 13. Luke 13. Verses 34 and verse 35. Luke 13, 34 and verse 35. Again. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets. And stonest them that are sent unto you unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And verily I say unto you, Ye shall not see me until the time come when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. The Lord's been there. We have to remember that, brethren, that when that sting, that pain, that anguish, that hurt, that betrayal that you will feel when your own, when your family betrays you. If it were an enemy, I could have bore it. But it was thou, a man mine equal. Have we considered how the Lord took that? Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. We're going to do some reading here. Can you handle this? The vision of Isaiah the son of Amoz, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner. And the ass is master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. Ah, sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity. A seed of evildoers. Children that are corrupters. Not only are they, were they a seed of evildoers, but they would corrupt others. 
They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. <laughs> Why should ye be stricken anymore? Get a load of this. You have the church of the living God and you're messing around. Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. The heart is faint. From the sole of the foot even unto the head. There is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying, stinking sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence. And it is desolate, as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Here's mercy. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been made, we should have been like unto Gomorrah, which went up quickly in the night, in a day and a night, or whatever. Quickly. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of your God, ye people of Gomorrah. Calling his own people, uh, referring to them as those of Sodom and Gomorrah. This is the Lord talking. Unto the apple of his eye. His people. His inheritance, hello. Yeah, not, you, you get why we're looking at this, of course. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of goats. Their heart was far, far away from him. They were religious. They were going through the motions, but their heart wasn't there. Call themselves Christians. They go through whatever they go through. They give much love with their mouth. But their heart doesn't belong to the Lord. He doesn't know them. It's, it's here doesn't go down that 18 inches. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblation. Vain oblation. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with it. Away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Stop your religiousness. <laughs> Stop. Okay, enough. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when you, when ye, excuse me, make many prayers... I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you. Make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now. And let us reason together. Seth the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient... 
ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. How is the faithful city becoming harlot? Get, get the gravity! Here, God the Father is speaking this of his own. Okay? How is the faithful city becoming harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Thy silver has become dross, thy wine mixed with water. If you ever tasted water, um, wine mixed with water, oh, it's nasty. Thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loveth gifts. They follow with after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither doth the cause of the widow come unto them. They're of the world. Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, Ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. You know, the Lord is really slow to wrath, great and long-suffering, tender and gracious, willing, oh, willing to forgive, plenteous in mercy. But God is also a God of judgment, of righteousness. And if he were to all of a sudden say, I've had it, Goodbye, earth, and everybody. He would be just and right to do so. But yet, consider this, what we're looking at. This being said of his own. Verse 25, And I will turn my hand upon thee, and purely purge away thy dross, and take away thy tin. And I will, and I will restore thy judges as at the first, and, they, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. And that's going to happen when the Lord comes back at his second coming and rules and reigns in Jerusalem, the kingdom of heaven fulfillment here okay when that happens when the king comes back and is ruling on the earth from Jerusalem Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness and the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together and they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed For they shall be ashamed of the oaks which ye have desired, and ye shall be confounded for the gardens that ye have chosen. For ye shall be as an oak whose leaf, leaf fadeth, and as a garden that hath no water. And the strong shall be as tow, and the maker of it as a spark, and they shall both burn together, and none shall quench them. Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 19 under verse 22. Again, the Lord speaking. Woe is me for my hurt. My wound is grievous, but I said, truly, this is a grief, and I must bear it. My tabernacle is spoiled, and all my cords are broken. My children are gone forth of me, and they are not. There is none to stretch forth my tent anymore, and to set up my curtains. For the pastors, the ones who ought to know and teach... 
are become brutish and have not sought the Lord. Therefore they shall not prosper and all their flocks shall be scattered. Behold, the noise of the brute is come and a great commotion out of the north country to make the cities of Judah desolate and a den of dragons. Let us, you know, brethren, let us remember this. When your family betrays you, you haven't betrayed them, by the way, brother or sister. You're saved, born again of the church of the living God. Living according to the scriptures. You're saved. You are not the one that has betrayed your family. Get that through your head, if nothing else, okay? The world hates the Lord. And you have the Lord living within you, okay? And like I said, there are times when you don't even have to say anything. Just being there. Living your life according to the scriptures. Okay? There are times, like I said, you don't have to say a word. But the very presence that the Lord is within you will make them of your family who are lost squeamish. If they did it unto the Lord, they're going to do it to us. <laughs> and as we're also looking at God's going to take care of his own. And he is going to have vengeance on those who would not. But see, you have a choice. What are you going to do? Are you going to compromise in order to keep the unity with your family? I know that there's a lot of um, temptation with you, several of you to do so. But what is it going to profit you? Brethren, <laughs> you know, what we've already looked at, the Lord Jesus Christ has to come first. If it's between your family and the Lord, you have to choose the Lord. Now, see, we know that, right? It's the doing of it, isn't it? And oh, that hurts, boy. Doesn't it? And again, a mother whose own, who came from betwixt her feet, whose own turn on her because she is saved. We have seen in the scriptures that if those children, son or daughter, whoever, absolutely just spit on the Lord and will have nothing to do, You have to choose the Lord. And sisters, you're right. I don't know what that's like. My wife can tell you about all of that. Okay? When it comes, I mean, brethren, we have to put the Lord first. Especially right now. You know, my brother, my father, I, nothing can get between the Lord and myself. 
Nothing can get between you and the Lord. Not your mother, your father, your wife, your husband, your daughter, your son. Why do you think one of the judgments of the children of Israel was to eat their own children? Hmm? Could it be because they put their children above the Lord? That doesn't mean that you hate them. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Okay? Not at all. But when it comes to which are you going to choose? And, 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 and okay, you're, I don't have children. My wife does. I don't know what that's like. You're right. But how do you think the Lord felt? When his own rejected him. Go to Ezekiel. Chapter 20. Ezekiel chapter 20. Verses 8 under verse 22. We're almost done. Ezekiel chapter 20. Verses 8 under verse 22. To be, I'll be honest with you, I considered reading this whole thing, <laughs> but we're not going to. So, chill. Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 8 under verse 22. Let's, let's begin at verse 7. Then said I unto them, Cast ye away every man the abominations of his eyes, and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. Egypt, today, our instruction and in righteousness. Egypt, the world. The idols of the world. Not just a stupid little marionette uh, Catholic statue or a Buddha thing or whatever. No, no, no. It is that, of course. But the idols of Egypt. Fame. Popularity. Fancy clothing. Fancy cars. Big houses. Uh, another idol is the one that you may be looking at in the mirror. Then said I unto them, Cast ye away every man the abominations of his eyes, and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. But they rebelled against me, and would not hearken unto me. They did not every man cast away the abominations of their eyes, neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. I brought you out of the land of Egypt. Be your God. Don't do this thing that I hate. They betrayed him. You're saved of the church of the living God. Seeking to live according to the scriptures. To honor our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and your family hates you for it, it's not your fault. Okay? It's nothing wrong with you, brother. It's them. Stop thinking that. And don't you dare, don't you dare compromise. Please, for your own sake. Think of the Lord, his faithfulness. But I wrought for my name's sake.
you're saved, born again of the church of the living God. You are of his bones and of his flesh, the body of Christ. His name is upon you. You are of the church of the living God. The living God. Yeah. But I wrought for my name's sake, that it should not be polluted before the heathen, among whom they were, in whose sight I made myself known unto them, in bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. Wherefore I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt, and brought them into the wilderness. And I gave them my statutes, and shewed them my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. Moreover also I gave them my Sabbaths, to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. A sign between me and them. Right there proving that the Sabbath, the Sabbath is a sign for the Jews. Okay? Let's continue. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not in my statutes, and they despised my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. And my Sabbaths, Sabbath, they greatly polluted. Then I said, I would pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. But I wrought for my name's sake, that it should not be polluted before the heathen, in whose sight I brought them out. Now think about that. You're of the church of the living God, and you're living as the world, living in sin, for his own sake, so you don't do any more damage just to yourself, and also quit shaming him. First Corinthians chapter five, anybody? Oh, it matters very, very much unto our Lord how you walk, especially right now. So I say. Every, every day, man, every day, examine yourselves. <clears throat> Verse 15. Yet also I lifted up my hand unto them in the wilderness, that I would not bring them into the land which I had given them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands, because they despised my judgments and walked not in my statutes, but polluted my Sabbaths, for their heart went after their idols. Nevertheless, for mine eye, nevertheless, mine eye spared them from destroying them. Neither did I make an end of them in the wilderness, when he had every right to, but he had mercy. But I said unto their children in the wilderness, Walk ye not in the statutes of your fathers, neither observe their judgments nor defile yourselves with their idols. I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them and hallow my Sabbaths. And they shall be a sign between me and you that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. For our instruction in righteousness, okay, you children out there, saved, of the church of the living God, your mother and father, are they think you're crazy. They want to disown you because you are saved of the church of the living God, living by the scriptures. Continue to walk in his statutes. Don't compromise. Live according to the scriptures. No matter the cost. Notwithstanding, the children rebelled against me. They walked not in my statutes, neither kept my judgments to do them, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. They polluted my Sabbaths. Then I said, I would pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. Nevertheless, I withdrew my hand and wrought for my name's sake 
that it should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen, in whose sight I brought them forth. See, again, self-examination through the scriptures daily. If you don't stand for the Lord now, when are you? If you can't make a stand amongst your own family, for the one who loved you and died for you because of what you did to him. Hmm. But if, if you can't stand for the Lord amongst your own family, then when will you stand? Go to Hosea. Hosea. Hosea, chapter 3. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress. According to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel, who took to other gods, and love flagons of wine. So I bought her to me for fifteen pieces of silver, and for an omer of barley, and a half homer of barley. And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot. Thou shalt not be for another man. So will I also be for thee. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, and without a teraphim. Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king, and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. Talking about the fulfillment of the uh, at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. When they will seek the Lord their God, David their king, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. But likening the children of Israel unto an adulteress, the Lord, those of his own who betrayed him. Hosea chapter 4. We're almost done. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, no mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committed, committing adultery, they break out, and blood toucheth blood. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish. The beasts of the field and then with the fowls of heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea also, shall be taken away. Yet let no man strive, nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priest. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, and thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Remember again, this is the Lord talking about those whom he chose, those, th those his people. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. And they were increased. So they sinned against me. Therefore will I change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people, and they set their heart on their iniquity. And there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways, and reward them their doings. For they shall eat and not have enough. 
they shall commit whoredom and shall not increase because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. Wherefore, whoredom and wine and new wine take away the heart. My people, my people, he's talking about. Ask counsel at their stocks and their staff declareth unto them. For the spirit of whoredoms hath caused them to err. And who is the mother of harlots? And they have gone a whoring from under their God. They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills under oaks and poplars and elms because the shadow thereof is good. Therefore your daughters shall commit whoredom. And your spouses will commit adultery. I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom, nor your spouses when they commit adultery, for themselves are separated with whores. <laughs> and they sacrifice with harlots. Therefore, the, the people that doth not understand shall fall. Get a load of that. The Lord can save anybody. But there is a line that someone will cross when they go too far where they cannot be brought back. It's not that the Lord can't save them, but they have made their choice. Their heart is hard. And they've made their choice. And they are the enemy of the Lord. Who could be your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, can't even imagine your own children, your husband, your wife. Though thou, Israel, play the harlot, yet let not Judah offend. And come not ye on to Gilgal, neither go ye up to Bethaven, nor swear the Lord liveth. For Israel slideth back as a backsliding heifer. Now the Lord will feed them as a lamb in a large place. Ephraim is joined to idols. Let them alone. Let them alone, brethren. Uh, your family betrays you. Betrays you. Rather, the Lord, excuse me. They turn against you, let them alone. They're joined onto idols. Being led astray. You know, the Lord will put you in a situation to witness unto them, praise the Lord. But if they reject and are persistent, let them alone. And put the Lord first, truly. Their drink is sour. They have committed whoredom continually. Her rulers with shame do love. Give ye. The wind hath bound up the wind hath bound her up in her wings, and they shall be ashamed because of their sacrifices. And finally, brethren, Hosea chapter six. Come, and let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will rise, raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Clearly for the children of Israel, of course, and talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the three-day thing, of course. But let's continue. Then we shall know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. O Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? O Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as a morning cloud, and as the early dew it goeth away. Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and thy judgments are as the light that goeth forth, Get a load of that one there, brother, sister. 
For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. But they, like men, have transgressed the covenant. There have they dealt treacherously against me. Gilead is a city of them that work iniquity and is polluted with blood. And as troops of robbers wait for a man, so the company of priests murder in the way by consent, for they commit lewdness. I have seen an horrible thing in the house of Israel. There is the whoredom of Ephraim. Israel is defiled. Also, O Judah, he has set and harvest for thee when I return the captivity of my people. Hence, the days are drawing nigh, brethren, to the redemption of the purchased possession. And remind yourself when your family is against you and it hurts you with, ins with inside. Remember these verses that we looked at in depth. Because while we feel sorrow, sadness, and in being indignant, how do you think the Lord feels? He lets you know. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Praise the Lord. But that betrayal, our Lord understands and knows quite well. Like I said, there are so many of you, so many of us, who struggle with this thing of family. And the reality of the situation is, brethren, that the Lord absolutely has to come before all things. We know it's such, but the actual doing of it, we get that. But that, that is our reasonable service. And, you know, brethren, you know, you've, uh, you've been given a chance to be a witness unto your family. You've uh, given them the gospel. Your testimony, just being there amongst them, and they hate you. They attack you, they criticize you, they threaten you. From such turn away. Because if they are getting in the way of you and the Lord, the Lord would not have that. And you of the church of the living God, you know that. But it's the doing of it. We get that. We get that. But keep in your mind what we looked at in the Old Testament. In Isaiah, in Jeremiah, in Ezekiel, and also in Hosea there. What our Lord said about Jerusalem, how he came unto his own and his own received him not. Again, in respect of being a father or a mother or whatever, and it be in the guise of your children, I, I don't know what that's like. My wife does, but I do not. I do not. But the Lord does. And that's one of the more painful things, isn't it? When it, it's, it seems with people who I've spoke with about this, it seems that 
it's it's painful when it's a brother or a sister of your immediate family but when your mother or your father is your enemy or obviously your son or your daughter that yeah yeah God the Father was manifest in the flesh, walked amongst his own, and his own received him not. He came unto those who had ought to have known who he was. They spit on him, tore out his beard, whooped him, bludgeoned him, stripped him naked and handed him over unto Rome. And he is our father. Brethren, pray for one another because the times are not getting better. They're getting worse day by day. Choose the Lord at all costs. Choose the Lord. Because if you put something in the way of that of the Lord and choose that over our Lord, it's not going to go well with you. And you're not going to have any peace. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Got quite a few videos coming this week. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. Um, like I said, we keep so many of you in prayer. Um, just stand by the scriptures Lord, uh, there, brethren. Stand by the word of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The authorized version of the scriptures. Hold this near and dear to your heart. <laughs> and examine yourselves every day. And when it comes right down to it, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See you in the next video.